I've been a PC gamer for pretty much my entire life. I still have clear memories of going through my friend's game collection in between GoldenEye matches to find new games to play. Handheld gaming was pretty primitive back then, but it was no less enjoyable. I don't think that I ever thought for a second while I was growing up that we would get to the point where people were building handheld computers with built-in controls that have the ability to rival some home consoles. Hello everyone, my name is Taki, and today we're going to take a look at the latest addition to the handheld PC gaming scene, the GBD Win Max. The Win Max comes with an Intel i5 1035G7 CPU and an Iris Plus 940 GPU. Also under the hood is 16GB of LPDDR4X RAM, 512GB of SSD storage, and three 5000mAh batteries that provide 57 watt hours of power. All of this is built around a very nice 8 inch 1280x800 IPS display with Wi Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 for connectivity. In this first section, I'm going to go over the build of the device, but I want to remind you that this is a prototype and the case and finish will differ from the retail version. The most significant difference is the top metal case, which obviously doesn't go with the color of the rest of the device. The first significant change that comes to the Max from the Win 2 is the large air vent on the bottom of the device. I'll go over heat later in this review, but this should give you a good idea of why this device runs as cool as it does. I also want to quickly point out that the design of this vent is reminiscent of some Chinese architectural designs for windows and I thought it was a very cool touch. Near here you will notice that we have four small feet on the bottom of the unit. These are pretty small and I would have liked to see them just a little longer but I haven't noticed any issues with airflow from any of my testing. You will notice that the speakers have been moved to the bottom of the device instead of on the top like they were on the Win 2 and I think this way is much better and it also doesn't get blocked by your hand placement. Over to the front of the device and you can see that we have a small microphone and headphone jack on the right side of the device instead of on the back like on the Win 2. On the right side you can see that we have an Ethernet port which is pointed down for some reason. This is one of the smaller things that I don't like about this device, partially because this port completely blocks your ability to hold the device in your hand comfortably for gaming or for general PC usage. This would have been much better as a port on the back of the device, and because of this I tend to use an adapter to free up this space when I want to download big game files or get lower latency for some online games. I do want to mention that just like its predecessor, there is a sufficient gap between the screen and the analog stick, so you don't need to worry about them pressing against the screen like they can on the XD+. That leaves us to the TF card slot, and this is a little more difficult to use in practice than I would expect. It doesn't bother me that much because I don't tend to swap cards that often, but it is kind of challenging to install and eject the SD card here due to the design. There's only one thing on the left side of the device, and it's also something that I'm not too fond of. This is your mouse and gamepad mode switch, and it unfortunately sits where your palm is. The challenge with this switch is that the grooves on it aren't as rigid as they could be, and it can be kind of challenging to use this if your fingers get slippery while playing for a while. I really would have loved to see this on the inside of the device like it is on the Win 2 because it can get annoying switching between modes a lot depending on what you're doing and it is something that never bothered me on the Win 2. Now let's talk about the back of the device and the first thing that I want to show you here is how it compares to the Win 2. If you take a look at the Win 2, you can see that the Max doesn't really take up that much more space but it does utilize that space better. We jump up from one full size USB port to two and these things are killer especially for connecting extra I.O. and hopefully in the future we will see some nice mini docks for this device to expand things further. You also have a full size HDMI out port that I don't really use that often, but the highlight is definitely the Thunderbolt 3 port that supports an eGPU and a USB Type-C port on the side. That leaves us with a very nice air exhaust to help move warm air off the motherboard to keep temperatures very low, especially when you compare them to how they feel on an unmodded Win 2. Now let's talk about the shoulder buttons. I did say in my Win 2 review that I wasn't a fan of the wobbly shoulder buttons that they used and I'm glad to say that they have changed these for the better on this device. These are similar to the style that's found on the Switch and they don't really move that much at all. They both use the same style of micro switches that are found in gaming mice and they feel very good in practice. These shoulder buttons are an overall huge upgrade from what was used on the Win 2. Before moving on, I do just want to do a quick profile shot of the device compared to the Win 2 and the XD Plus for scale. Now the whole device is obviously heavier than other handheld devices on the market. There's no getting around that. 
but it is only around 800 grams, which really isn't heavy enough to cause any noticeable problems based on my experience testing the device so far. I've done over 150 hours of testing so far, and almost all of that time was spent holding the device in my hands. So I will say that it isn't bad at all, and the weight distribution is really well balanced. This next section is going to specifically focus on the controls and keyboard, and I would argue that this is probably the most important aspect of the entire product. The first thing that you will notice is that the device uses offset analog sticks, and even though I personally would have liked them to both be in the middle, this layout works well on the Win Max. A key highlight here from the Win 2 is that this device uses clickable analog sticks, which is why we only have two sets of shoulder buttons instead of three. I'm really indifferent to the Vita D-pad on this device because I do think a better D-pad could have been made for a system like this. But I would rather GPD use an established D-pad like this that works instead of trying to make one that doesn't. The key takeaway here is that this works very well for retro games and new ones and there are no issues with stuck inputs or multiple inputs from pressing down too hard like on other devices that I've reviewed. The buttons on the right side of the device also follow the Vita, so if you're familiar with how that feels, you'll be right at home here. I did like the bigger buttons on the Win 2, but these are at least comparable. If you've owned one of these devices before, you know that the analog sticks do not give you true analog range of input. They tend to stick to the cardinals, and it makes it very difficult to use these controls for serious gaming. This never really bothered me on the Win 2, because the device was too small for me to really use it for PC FPS games. But the WinMax is much more suited for this, so I pushed the engineers to redo the controller firmware based on some of my suggestions, and I'm happy to say that they have made some large improvements. To illustrate this point, let's quickly take a look at how input works on the Win 2. You can see if I move the analog stick around, most of the places that register input are on the cardinal directions, and in fact, your input will snap to those ranges if you push the stick in those directions even just slightly. On the newest controller firmware for my prototype, however, you can see that I have generally full range of input available to me. This has made the device much better to use for the FPS games that I like to play, like Overwatch when I don't have a mouse to use, or Fortnite. I've gone back and forth with my feelings over the trackpad, and that's partially because I thought that I would actually use this more than I do, and that's largely due to the fact that I didn't really like using the analog sticks to control the mouse on the Win 2. Thankfully enough, things are a lot different on this device. The experience is so much better on the WinMax that I don't even use the trackpad at all unless I can't switch the gamepad mode off to use the mouse. The biggest thing that is going to take some time to get used to is this awkward keyboard design. I've already talked about this at length in another video and I would encourage you to watch it if you haven't already because it is very insightful. The strangest thing about this keyboard is that it does not use the traditional WASD layout that you will be accustomed to if you play PC games. It will take a day of using this device to build up muscle memory of where your fingers need to be to press the W key off to the side a little, but it isn't bad. A more significant downside to this device is the fact that we have half height number keys, which makes playing MMOs more difficult on the WinMax than they should be. On a device with less performance, this wouldn't be a big problem, but the WinMax is good enough to play a lot of popular MMOs that really need quick access to these buttons. I didn't expect that this device would be decent for typing given the awkward arrangement, but I was surprised to see that my typing speed is pretty similar to what it is on a full-size keyboard. On my laptop or on a keyboard, I can usually type around 100 words per minute, but on the WinMax, I can type around 85. That being said, anytime that I need to use quotation marks or colons, my speed probably drops down to 60 words per minute because I have to actually look at the keyboard to find where those buttons are. I've also done a lot of typing on this device handheld, but my speed is only around 35 words per minute and I don't tend to type that much in this manner. That leaves us to the backlight keyboard functionality, and if I'm being honest, these lights are nowhere near as bright as they should be. My ThinkPad laptop has two levels of brightness on the keys, and the lowest setting on that is about three times as bright as the WinMax. The WinMax brightness is functional, but only just. I want to wrap up this section by showcasing some footage of WASD input in practice. I have some other footage later in this video, but I think this game is a good example to use since it's a game that runs really well on the WinMax. Speaking from experience, I will say that I don't think I'd ever be able to play an MMO like this seriously if I needed to rely on those half-height number keys, so it will be really important to have a programmable mouse if you are interested in buying this device. I've already shared some of my feelings about this screen on this device in another video, and even though it looks dated for the time, the screen is actually very good. 
This is the first 16x10 PC device that I've ever owned, and I really like how retro games and newer ones scale to this aspect ratio. It's just unfortunate that we have these large bezels, because this device would have looked so much better if they would have built the device around an LCD panel from the design stage instead of sourcing one afterwards. Now it wouldn't be a GBD product review if I didn't take the time to talk about the hinge, and I wish that I could tell you right now that this hinge won't 100% break, but I don't know that. What I do know is that they are still working on the hinge, and the one that I have is not final. The hinge that I have is a dual design, which should eliminate some of the problems that happened on the Win 2. The only problem with my prototype hinge is that it's only perfect up to the last couple of degrees that it can open. This wouldn't be a problem if I use this device stationary, but I actually find that I want the device to be opened up to that exact angle where it becomes loose when I'm walking around, and I just have to settle instead for opening up the device completely. And the final important topic that I want to cover here is heat or the lack thereof. I'm going to use a benchmarking tool on the Win 2 and the Win Max to help describe how the device handles heat. The only part of the Max that gets warm on the top is right around the D-pad, but it's very minor even at full load. That means when you're holding the device in your hand, your thumb and this Q area will be warmer than any other place in your hands. That's basically the only warm area on the whole entire device. The Win 2 can also get warm in this exact same area, especially around the D-pad, but the difference is the backside can also get warm. The Win 2 can get warm in your hands if you're playing demanding games. There's no way around that, but the Win Max does not. And finally, here's what the fan sounds like on the Win Max with low usage. And here's what it sounds like under full load. Emulation in native gameplay is also where the Win Max really shines. You are basically taking everything that the Win 2 can emulate and adding Switch, better PS2 and 3DS, Xbox 360, and more PS3. My favorite systems to emulate on this device are GameCube and PS2, and that's largely due to how much I like the way that 4x3 games look on a 16x10 display. I think that it fills out the screen very nicely without a lot of black borders. I've already tested 35 PS2 games on the Win Max, so I'd encourage you to go take a look at the card on the top right hand corner of your screen to go to that video if you're interested in seeing specific games tested. Wii U is another system that runs very well on the Win Max, especially with the latest async update that just dropped a few days ago. I have a whole video comparing the Win Max against the Win 2 with Breath of the Wild, so if you're interested in seeing how the device performs with CMU, feel free to click the card on the right hand corner of your screen now. Besides testing PS2, I dedicated a lot of time towards testing 3DS on the Win Max, and even though Citra still has room for improvement, the emulator does run well on this Listen. device. The final systems that I tested were Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, and that's basically the limit of what is currently possible on this hardware. I did a big test of a bunch of games, and from what I've seen, you can get a decent selection of games to run without any issues and without the need of an eGPU, but it can be a mixed bag. It's still cool to have a handheld that can at least run some of the games that are supported by this stage of the emulation scene. Emulation is fine on the Win Max, but I'm more interested in using it for PC games. This is partially due to the fact that I have a good selection of devices that are already good at emulation, but I don't have a lot of devices that are good at playing PC games. I've probably sunk in more time than I'd care to remember into games like Overwatch, WoW, RS, and Monster Hunter World, but I've largely done all of that sitting in one place, and it's pretty much a game changer to be able to play those games and more on the go. That leaves us with battery life. And this isn't very straightforward because it really is dependent on how you use the device. 
One of my biggest disappointments with the WinMax is that there isn't currently a way to configure TDP as readily or as easily as you can on the Win 2. I use about 10 different TDP profiles on my Win 2 that I can quickly switch between to pull out the most battery life possible, but there isn't a solution like that yet for the Win Max. Based on my test so far, you can expect to get around 6 hours of battery life on the high end from medium level gaming like PSP and GameCube down to less than 2 hours on the low end if you are playing AAA games or emulating high end systems like PlayStation 3. When I'm not gaming and I'm just doing some video editing or browsing the internet, I can get between 8 and 10 hours of battery life from light use. It's not bad, but it could be a lot better, and I hope that we see some big improvements in this area going forward. That leaves us with the question of should you buy the device? And I always try to bring these videos to the point where you'll know one way or the other if the device is for you. If you've seen my GPD Micro PC video, you'll know that I really had a use for a device like the MPC so I could do some production work for this channel on my commute. The WinMax easily fits the bill of being able to edit video on the go, and it also fits the bill of being able to be my standalone gaming system, so this device is very useful for my use case. I do have a PC at home that's much better than the WinMax, but it's better than the laptop that I already use, so I can double dip. Anyway, that's it for this review of the GPD Win Max. If I miss something that you want to see covered, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to try to get back to you. If this video helped you in any way, please also consider supporting the channel by subscribing and leaving a like on the video. It helps a lot. Happy gaming everyone. Talk you out.